I want to talk a little bit about how disease uh, affects uh, how people move around, population, migration, things like that. I guess the most obvious case, Craig, is uh, people looking for places where there aren't diseases. They're already that's, afflicted, so they look, go somewhere. That's right. I mean, if you, if you look at uh, Europe, particularly during the Industrial Revolution, as people crowded in for work, employment, and what they thought would be better living conditions, they just created a hotbed for disease. And uh, you could even suggest that a lot of movement was due to uh, people trying to escape infections. Uh, think about the devastation of cholera and uh, the wide open spaces looked pretty good when you were crowded and everybody was dying from diarrhea. Yeah, and I guess the other best example of this is when uh, uh, diseases move into a place and depopulate it, which yeah. then opens it up for someone else to move into the same piece of ground. Yeah, that's exactly right. We'll be talking about what happened in the Americas that uh, really uh, things were wide open after a couple of European diseases swept through the native populations. And uh, also the effect of disease in uh, people being expelled from their communities, unpopular folks, uh, some disease comes along, well, it's their fault, and so we kick, a, we kick you out. And so disease uh, seems to have had quite an effect on where people have moved and uh, on migration in world history in every way you can think about it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, just the, the you know, before there was uh, the movement that there is today of populations, it was easy for a disease to either wipe out a population or aggravate a population to the point that uh, the only recourse, not knowing the cause of what was transpiring in the population, was to pick up and leave. So, so Craig, it seems to me this is all wrapped up in the introduction of some new disease. It hasn't always been there, so it affects... Yeah, exactly. Uh, you think about uh, just the Americas that, that we'll talk about in some of the vignettes and the fact that these people had never seen measles or smallpox, which had been around Europe for a long time. The populations had got accustomed to them. They'd selected out for those who were more resistant. And these diseases were devastating with the 95% fatality rates. So part of this story is not only about people moving, but diseases moving and also diseases changing, mutations, uh, the evolution of these mi microbes that uh, bring, yeah. bring about what we think of as a new disease in some place. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, diseases always had the ability to mutate and, and enter new populations. You don't need to look much beyond what's happening uh, in our recent history with uh, HIV. Here's a disease that uh, no one had any immunity to, and it swept through uh, populations around the world, really changing uh, the habits in many countries and the, the the, the numbers of folks uh, because of its devastating effects. So. You know, whenever I think of this subject that we're talking about today, I think about the depopulation of the Americas and Oceania as um, uh, the Europeans arrived with smallpox and measles. Uh, we're going to have a, a vignette about that and, and deal with that a little bit more, more completely. Uh, oh, uh, one that didn't affect people so much, the Irish. Oh, yeah, so it, it didn't always need to be a disease that uh, affected humans. You know, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what happened with a potato fungus, a whole culture uh, with kind of a, a based on uh, getting their nutritional needs met by a single crop, and uh, to have that crop fail uh, really had a profound effect on their population. And, and in a similar sort of way, diseases that afflict livestock, we have the African cattle complex situation. Oh, where, yes, yeah. You know, people couldn't take their cattle into certain regions, so it affected dramatically where people moved because of where they could uh, take their livestock. This last one that we're going to consider t in our vignettes, uh, the Jewish diaspora, unpopular people, uh, scapegoats, uh, the effect of disease on the, the spreading of those folks all over the world. So yeah, and, and in addition, uh, this is a, uh, you can uh, make the argument, as we will in this vignette, that the uh, that the uh, bubonic plague epidemic of the 1300s really can be correlated to the uh, Holocaust in uh, World War II. So I think that'd be a fascinating yeah, connection yeah. That, that can be made. And we're gonna have uh, Craig talk to us a bit about the disease smallpox. Uh, recent book called it the history's greatest killer. Uh, look forward to that. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, in, until uh, until Edward Jenner in the early 1800s, smallpox probably had the most profound effect on the human population and its movement and migration. 
as, as any single disease.